Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I want to talk to you about Google Signals. So back a couple months ago, Google announced something called Google Signals at their marketing conference, and it was a big part of the Google marketing platform, and I was really excited about it because it promised to bring cross-device tracking to the masses. And I wanted to create a video on it. I asked for your comments, and I got a lot of really good comments about, yes, Jeff, you should create a video. And so then I went and started to create a video, and it turns out that there was nothing in my Google Signals account. Well, now I have data, and I have a reaction, and an opinion as to what should go into Google Signals, and I wanna share it for you in this video. So let's dive in to Google Signals and learn what it's all about and get my reaction as to the utility of this awesome and exciting new feature inside of Google Analytics. Let's talk about cross-device tracking with Google Signals. Now, earlier this summer, Google announced their 2018 ad innovations for both Google Ads, Google Analytics, and what they now call the Google Marketing Platform. They're letting us know all the things they're changing, all the upgrades they're making, and the new features and reports they're putting into our hands as advertisers and as people who just want to measure our websites. And I wrote an article about this and basically said there's three major innovations that you need to know about if you want to proceed forward in 2018. And one of those changes is something that I said was a game changer or big news. I try not to say everything's a game changer because the game really hasn't changed that much over the years. But it is big news, and that is that Google promised us we could do cross-device reporting right inside of Google Analytics, and they made it available on the day that it was released. And so I signed up for it right away, and I asked you in the comments, I said, hey, do you want me to do a video on this Google Signals thing? Do you want me to see if it works? Do you want me to show you what it looks like in Jeffalytics? A lot of you were having trouble enabling this at the time. It sounds like the problem came from Google repealing access shortly after they told us that it was available, and so I got it right away. But by the time you read my blog post, it wasn't available. So it was pretty frustrating for a lot of us. And then, even though I had it enabled, it became pretty frustrating for me too because I didn't have any valuable data for the sites where I enabled Google Signals. In fact, it didn't work at all for me. It's that 100% of my traffic was there and there is no overlap between my traffic. So basically, I enabled something that didn't work. Now, fortunately for us, this is a beta and a beta from Google usually means that they're working on it. They realize that it's not ready for prime time, but they wanna put it into our hands. And so I've been checking my reports, my Google Signals reports over and over again, just trying to see when this would be enabled and when I can create this video for you that you can use to determine whether you wanna use Google Signals or not. And now I have data and I wanted to share with you a quick look into the report. So let's dive right into the beta of Google Signals and see what it has to offer. Okay, so here we are in the Jefflytics Google Analytics account and we're in our audience section. And as you can see here, we are in cross device and underneath that is device overlap. Now there's several reports that go into Google Signals and we're gonna take a look at all these things as we go into this deep dive video. Now, if you come into this report and it says activate Google Signals, that means that it's not enabled yet and you're gonna to wanna to continue and go through the steps that are outlined in our previous blog post where we show you how to get this thing set up. So I'm gonna make an assumption now that you have already activated your Google Signals, and that is something that I've done, and that's how I get data into my reports. Okay, so here we are back in the account where this is enabled, and as you can see here, we are under cross device, and the first thing I'm looking at is device overlap. Now device overlap, you can see this is inspired somewhat by the multi-channel funnels report. It looks pretty similar. And as you can see here, there's overlap. Here's the desktop only, here is my mobile only, and then there's a little bit of an overlap between desktop and mobile. Now in this case, it's half of a percentage point, so it's not very significant, but there is some overlap. And when I was talking about or complaining about this report previously, there was no data showing any overlap. So now that I've given it time to collect data, I have enough data to show you that there is some overlap between these aspects of my website. Now, if I were you and you were enabling this yourself, I would expect that you're not gonna have any data right away. And so you're probably gonna wanna wait 30 days after you enable it to make sure that you have data coming in so you can do some meaningful analysis. And if you want to, you can see, you can change your date range in here and you can say, I wanna look at it the last seven days. And so if you're impatient and you wanna see this stuff right away, you can adjust your date range. And notice that this is not the same date range control that you have within Google Analytics. It's customized and it's featured only inside of the cross device reports. 
The other thing to notice here is that it's clearly a beta and Google wants you to send feedback on this. They want to make it more useful. So hopefully they are invested in making this report more useful because right now I debate the utility of this, at least for the data that I have in my Jeff Olytics account. And so as I scroll down and I look at the device category, you can see that there's very little overlap between these devices. Everything else we see here is known. Like if I were to look at my mobile reports right now, these things would match entirely. And within mobile versus desktop versus tablet, I would also know my goal values. I'd know my conversion rates. I would know my goal completions. And of course, I probably wouldn't know my goal value per user, at least in this fashion, because this report is comically off. Look at what we see here. They're basically saying that each visitor is worth $233,232.4.23, which is an insane number because the total goal value is only 5000 and there's 25,000 users that we're looking at at this point in time. So goal value per user right now is unusable in my account. I'm not sure if it's unusable in your account. Let me know in the comments if you're seeing something as blatantly crazy and funny as mine, or if you're seeing something that's promising. I'd like to see what you think about that. Now we can drill down in device category and operating system. This doesn't really do much for me, but you can see the overlap is still the overlap and it is still desktop plus mobile when they put it together. This report actually doesn't change as a result of this selection we have here. We can now just see Windows versus Mac versus Android versus iOS versus Linux. And I somehow get some traffic on all these platforms, but I'm not gonna dwell on that. That's never been a thing that I really focus on too much. These are more diagnostics for developers to know what platforms they should support. The other thing here is you can select which goal you want to look at. Now I'm going to remain looking at all goals, but you might find specific goals are more useful for you. So this report doesn't really do much. It actually doesn't do much for me at all. It's only focused on conversions. It's not focused on traffic sources or anything else. There's nothing I can do to take action off of this report. It fills in a few gaps like these multi-session visitors that they're coming in through multiple devices, but it really doesn't do much more than that. And so I can't take action off of this. Google Signals right now is, I wouldn't say disappointing because it's a beta report and it might be getting better, but really it's showing me that my tracking is already pretty good and I don't have a lot to worry about and I shouldn't be fretting too much about the number of new users versus returning because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of loss. It's 99.5% exactly what I thought it was going to be, and that is not significant enough for me to make any major changes. Looking here, I can look at my device paths. This is actually not really showing me anything, but let's see if there's a steps before a goal. Okay, basically the only before step is somebody going on a desktop. I'm not sure what this number means. If we look at channels, we can see where our channels are coming from based on our default channel grouping. And as you can see here, it's organic search. But again, this is not showing us the overlap between the different traffic sources. This is just simply all of our traffic. So it's not qualifying to say only cross device traffic. It's not qualifying things in the right way. It's not looking at the segment of people who are multi-device. So I don't even know how I'd get to that. I could, I'm sure I could dig into it and start to figure out if it's only overlap devices, what I'm looking at, but this is not really giving me a lot of value in this report. It's actually just another way of looking at a report that is much more useful inside of standard GA because we have things like secondary dimensions in there. I guess we can put a secondary dimension here. This is almost like a preview of a new version of Google Analytics that is not as good as the current Google Analytics. And so I'm really hoping that this is not the new version of Google Analytics without table filters or the ability to do analysis. But as I look into this thing, as I dig into it, it does seem like it's more of an aesthetic upgrade of Google Analytics, and it's maybe going to come at the expense of the functionality of the tool. So that's just a concern right now. Hopefully I'm just wearing a tinfoil hat right now, and that's not the case, but I'm not really seeing much going on here as far as what this report is useful at, and it's probably due to the traffic I have coming into my site. There must not be as much overlap. Now, I'd assume if you're the analyst of something like Netflix, where people are signing in on different devices all the time, you might get more insights than somebody like me who has a lot of desktop traffic. And if we look at our acquisition device, this is pretty much just a deeper dive and a prettier version of our device reports that are already inside of Google Analytics. This is not an enhancement at all. This is not separating out just your overlap. It's really just a prettier, more graphical version of what's out there right now without the functionality that comes from an analyst. Now, if I were to have revenue overlap, these things might be populated, they might be more useful. But right now what I'm seeing is not much. 
it's not giving me much value. The device overlap report is probably the best report, and this is really the only value that it's giving me, but there's no ability to analyze. And in fact, the design is just so slick that I don't really know if I like it. And if this is where Google Analytics is heading, then I'm gonna be a little bit upset. And so that's all I can offer you at this point. I was hoping that I'd be able to go in here and to give you a bunch of insights and to show you how great this report was. That was my original intent because I was pretty excited about this. I held off on doing a review for a while because I was worried that I wouldn't have much to say. And then I did a review and I don't have much to say. I don't have much positive to say. I don't really have a lot negative to say. This report's there. And you're probably not going to use it for much because these reports have always been there. And the part that's useful, this overlap, is not really featured throughout the rest of the reports. There's some broken items that are in here. And so overall, Google Signals to me, as of the time that I record this video, is a whole lot of meh. It's just okay. I don't really have a lot of good things to say about it. And I hope that this thing changes. I hope that because it's a beta and they're accepting feedback and they watch my videos, I hope the team at Google takes my feedback in the spirit in which it's intended. And I want you to turn this thing from a meh report, do I really need this report, to something useful and something that we can really use because I remain very excited about Google's ability to give us cross-device tracking. You're the only ones who can do it, and I can't wait to see what you do and what you come up with as this thing leaves beta and becomes a pivotal report inside of our Google Analytics account. Okay, so that's the end of our video. What did we learn about Google Signals? The focus is really only on conversions. They do have some acquisition behavior reports in there, but it's really all about conversions, but it's not featuring conversions that are cross device. So it's really pretty much just the reports we already have. Now some reports are straight up broken right now. You notice that the last goal column just doesn't work and hopefully that can be fixed. But still, you don't really lose anything by enabling Google Signals as long as you're GDPR compliant. And so I would recommend enabling it now because it's gonna take 30 days for that data to come in and be useful. So you might as well enable it now, again, assuming that you're GDPR compliant and then See what insights can come in and see if it adds any value to you. And finally, your mileage will vary. I'm just looking at this for one account. I'm gonna enable Google Signals on some other accounts and pay attention to them. But I'd like to know, what signals are Google sending you? Leave a comment and let me know what you're seeing in Google Signals. Let me know if the report's useful for you, if you're getting a lot of value out of it, or if it's even less valuable than I found the reports. Because I'd love to know what we think about this brand new report, how to use it, and how we can gain insights and make ourselves better by knowing cross-device overlap. For me, it's a half a percentage point, so that means that I'm 99.5% sure of the results before this report, and that does not change my behavior much at all because I never really cared about 100% accuracy in the first place. I just wanted things to be as accurate as possible. So leave a comment and let me know what you think, and I look forward to hearing from you and expanding my own knowledge of this brand new report inside of Google Analytics.